the study examined patients at a university and referral hospital in Kenya. Um, do you think that this technology would be applicable in a setting sort of in a more developed nation? So the whole idea is that um, we wanted to develop some um, low cost affordable technologies um, which can detect uh, blood hemoglobin level, which can be used for um, anemia assessment and etc. So as a first um, collaborator, um, we work with um, Moi University in Eldoret, Kenya. And as you um, mentioned that uh, our target population for this particular study is uh, more like um, African countries on um, Kenya. And so it's a good question now uh, whether this can be uh, applicable to um, you know, different uh, group of populations or different uh, ethnic groups and et cetera. So it's a good question. And um, I think there's some uh, potential to directly translate this to uh, different applications, different groups of people. But I think we have to go through um, you know, study, rigorous study to really show the validity of this technology a particular um, population of interest. Is this something that more can be used as a tool that could notify a patient that they need to go see a clinician? Or is this sort of a tool that could replace something that's already in a clinician's arsenal? Right, it depends on um, the medical settings. Um, in the US, uh, I think we don't really need a technology to replace the blood test. It's good enough, we have a good resources and we have labs available. But in some cases, for example, in our collaborators uh, in Kenya, uh, infrastructure is limited. In that case, uh, sometimes they need to make a decision based on what they have. In that case, uh, maybe this technology can serve as a uh, you know, diagnostic tool to make a decision. Definitely, um, we want to have more uh, laboratory tests so that we can really um, uh, validate this one. So it really depends on um, situations. In one study we are planning um, with, uh, in a hospital in India and um, community health uh, care workers actually uh, travel to rural areas and uh, villages. In that case, uh, they need to ask them, uh, the patient to, to uh, go to the hospital and then get the test and maybe they need to wait a week and it's it's not feasible in that case maybe although we can kind of I, i'm not sure it's a good term to use for sacrifice accuracy or precision maybe it's more important to uh give the result right away so again um it kind of depends on uh, medical settings and applications um you're thinking of what kind of accuracy did we see? Were you impressed with it? Was it more or less than you were expecting? So uh, we had to develop the algorithm first, a kind of more like a training of algorithm. And then uh, using the, uh, the data sets, um, which are never used in the training data set, uh, we could sort of have an understanding of the performance of our algorithm. So in that study, uh, we had uh, data about 153 patients, actually 153 patients, and 90 of them uh, we used to uh, train the algorithm. And then the 10%, uh, which uh, was not included in our training data set, uh, used as a testing set or the validation set. And then in that case, uh, we have accuracy. So here, the the gold standard is a blood, laboratory blood test, which uh, requires blood draw. So we use this uh, gold standard to compare. In that case, uh, the difference in terms of percentage is about five to 10%. And using all the data set, we have 153, the accuracy. So we actually, we have two version of uh, sort of algorithms and one is more like ideal case using kind of big system. I think uh, you've seen the uh, kind of system in the paper that gives us very accurate measurement um, about the hyperspectral data set. That one, uh, uh, the performance is better, but uh, if you kind of talking about the uh, mobile version of this one, then I would say the accuracy is about five to 10% to compare to the, uh, the uh, gold standard. And 
getting uh going back uh, getting back to your question um i'm happy uh can am i happy with the performance so actually uh there's more detailed guideline it's called clear it's fda a cms uh and regulated area for diagnostic uh, tests used uh, in the hospital uh, settings. And they recently uh, published another guideline about blood hemoglobin test. So if you really want to replace a conventional blood test, then the overall accuracy has to be less than 4%. So in that uh, criterion, our technology is not good enough to replace the uh, conventional blood test. So, uh, you know, definitely um, we have some other, um, I mentioned that um, other kind of use cases for different settings. But uh, another aspect is that um, we developed the algorithm based on the limited number of uh, patients. Um, and um, we wish, uh, actually we are kind of actively um, moving on to get more data from more uh, population, a uh, large pa number of patients, then I think we will be able to improve our algorithm better.